Hi, good afternoon and welcome to the Trade Decorator Festival. This afternoon we have a Crown Trade product showcase for you and after the tutorial we will be joined by Crown Paint's technical expert Kevin O'Donnell to take your questions in our live Q&A. So first of all we'll have a whistle stop tour of key Crown Trade products followed by the Q&A session. Crown Trade's products have been continually developed with the professional in mind, which is why through the brands they can now offer a complete solution for any painting and decorating project. From high quality paints and masonry coatings to wood care solutions and more, Crown have everything you need for your next project. Um, the Crown Trade um, tutorial covers three areas, which is Clean Extreme, Quick Dry Fast Flow and PX Primer Ranges. If you are watching us over on Facebook, welcome to the show. And it's not too late for you to join us for the live element of the show, the Q&A, if you'd like to put your questions to Kevin. There is a link in the post which you can click on and come and join us over on Crowdcast. And you'll also get an opportunity to be entered into the prize draw to win a Crown Decorating Centre goodie bag. So let's take a look at the tutorial. At Crown Trade, we ask painters and decorators what's the most awkward thing to decorate. Stairs and landings. Flipping railings. The kitchen. Downstairs low. High ceilings. Cramped spaces. And what's the best trade paint? Crown. 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 Crown Trade. It's just so easy to use. At least there's one thing 98% of painters and decorators do agree on. There's no better paint than Crown Trade. When we formulate durable paints, the scrub resistance is one of the most important parts of the testing regime. The test that we do is the ISO 11998 test. Within that test, the paints are classified class one to five, class one being the best. So clean extreme, matte and eggshell both come out at class one, which is excellent. It's really important uh, for paint to have good scrub resistance because you're cleaning that on a regular basis and you need it to withstand that regular cleaning regime. We will test our products against our competition as we want to make sure that we're the best on the market, which recent testing has proven that we're the best for stain resistance. So if we were to compare that to a standard vinyl mat, for example, it would have 100% better stain resistance compared to some standard products. 
When we test for stain resistance, what we do is we apply lots of different stains to the panel, such as red wine, coffee, curry, different pens, pencils, flip chart markers, things like that. And we try and wash those stains away. So the stains are left for a certain amount of time and then washed away with soapy water. I've got some results here from the tests. So this panel here is a panel where we've left all the stains on and not tried to wash them off. So you can see this is a benchmark. So you can see uh, we have things like coffee, red wine, ink, curry, and various different pens and pencils. So anything that you would come across in your normal day-to-day -day life that could end up on your, your walls. And then what we've done here, this is the Clean Extreme panel, so you can see the majority of the stains have completely washed away. The idea of this test is to ensure that all these everyday stains are possible to wash off. We also test against the competition, so you can see we have com com competitor A. And you'll see, compared to the Clean Extreme, the stains haven't washed off as well. And then we also have competitor B, and again, the stains haven't washed off as well on this one either. The testing is done side by side to ensure that it's a fair test. Not all paints are the same when it comes to a scrub test. Some paints you'll find that you'll clean a few times, and then what you'll start to see is paint starts to break down so you'll see the actual paint on the sponge or whatever you're using to clean the surface with. So what we do here is an additional test which shows that the paint will go at least 10,000 cycles before you see that breakdown on your sponge and that 10,000 cycles is equivalent to about five hours continual scrubbing. Another test we do is the whiteness so these are our white paints we've evaluated and you'll notice that competitor A is very yellow compared to our clean extreme. Clean Extremes remain this crisp white even after all the stains have been applied and washed away. I'd recommend Clean Extreme for anywhere in your home, but specifically for corridors, hallways, communal rooms, anywhere where you're going to get a lot of people coming in and out of that area. I personally use Clean Extreme everywhere in my own home. The Clean Extreme range also includes antibacterial and anti-mould, both of which have the same key properties as the current stain resistant Clean Extreme. The antibacterial contains SteriTouch, which is a silver ion technology. This defends against bacteria such as MRSA and E. coli and has been independently tested. This is suitable for hospitals and healthcare facilities, but it's also great in your own home too for areas such as your kitchen or maybe children's bedrooms. The mould inhibiting is ideal for kitchens, bathrooms and void premises and anywhere where you get condensation. It inhibits the growth and development of mould. That's why we say, in any space, stains leave no trace.
There are pressures on painting contractors these days to use more environmentally friendly systems. Uh, the tr traditional solvent-based systems are very bad for the environment, contain high VOC levels. So we've developed a minimal VOC level product, a range of products um, that the decorator can use and goes quite a long way to matching the performance of the traditional solvent-based products. The traditional water-based systems were suffering from poor flow and wet edge time. They would dry very quickly so that you couldn't go back and rework in, into the paints. Um, and brush marking has always been a very uh, big problem. The gloss levels that you get with a traditional water-based paint have always been relatively low as well. We've got a team of professionally trained decorators on site and we develop the product in conjunction with ours. We produce different rheologies of paint and they each applied them and fed back how they liked it and how it compared to a traditional solvent based paint. So we tried as much as possible to produce a paint that had the same amount of brush drag and also gave you the same flow and finish of a solvent based paint. The breakthrough was this advanced polymer technology that we use in all three of the products that we've developed. It's based on alkyd emulsion technology and it allows us to produce a product that has significantly better flow, significantly better gloss levels and general aesthetic appearance matching that of a solvent based finish. The traditional water based paints generally have a lot of brush marks in them whereas the fast flow is uh, that's significantly reduced. So this is uh, the sort of flow and levelling we get from a traditional water-based gloss paint. This is the flow and levelling we get from a solvent-based gloss paint. You can see it's obviously much less brush marks. And this is the crown fast flow, which we've gone significant steps to try and improve the flow to match the solvent-based product. And to test it, generally in the lab, we would test gloss. Um, we would take the paint and we would draw it down on a piece of clean glass like this. We would then uh, draw down the paint. We get what we call a drawdown bar. We would put a drawdown bar onto the glass, put a bit of wet paint in front of the bar and draw it down in one constant smooth motion. And we let it dry overnight and then we measure it with what we call a gloss meter. This is an example of one here. Um, what this does is it shines a light onto the dried paint film, which is then reflected back up and there's sensors in this machine that measure the angle of light or the amount of light coming back at 20, 60 and 85 degrees. The finish determines how much light's reflected back. For the satin and the gloss top coats, the most important are 20 and 60 degrees, which we're measuring here. Um, this is the fast flow gloss. So we're typically getting a gloss value of 88 gloss units at 20 degrees, which is the sort of levels you get for a traditional solvent based gloss paint. The satins is tested in the same way, uh, we'll draw it down on the piece of glass but we've got a lower specification to match to than a gloss paint obviously because it's uh, less reflective for the light. Um, we match our fast flow satins to a traditional solvent based satin finish. We developed this system originally as a gloss paint, we then carried that technology that we'd used from the polymers into developing an undercoat and also a satin finish. We've developed a contemporary satin finish to match the solvent-based satin finishes. In order to get the full benefits from the system, the optimum flow and uh, aesthetic appearance, it's very important to use the fast flow undercoat with the top with the satin on the gloss finishes.
two key primers in our range which offer excellent adhesion to problem substrates such as ceramics, glass and melamine. The PX3 means primer times three. So that means it's got good adhesion, blocks stubborn stains and also resists alkali attack. The PX4 means primer times four. So that also has good adhesion, blocks stubborn stains, resists alkali attack, and it's water-based, which means it's quick drying and low odor. Adhesion is one of the key areas which the PX3 and PX4 outperform other products on the market, particularly in areas of high humidity. The two products also block stains. Be aware, you may see the stain coming through to the primer coat. The product is designed to do this. It's designed to lock the stain in and stop that traveling through to the top coat. The products are also excellent for smoke damaged or fire damaged surfaces. We thoroughly tested both the PX3 and the PX4 against other primers in the marketplace and they consistently outperform all of the primers. At Crown Trade, we ask painters and decorators, what's the best breakfast butty? Sausage, egg, black pudding. Bacon and ash brown. Smashed avocado. Veggie sausages. Bacon and lettuce. Lettuce. And what's the best trade paint? Crown. 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 Crown Trade, the finish is gorgeous. At least there's one thing 98% of painters and decorators do agree on. There's no better paint than Crown Trade. Hi, welcome back. So that was our Crown Paints tutorial. Um, we're now going to be going live to our Q&A session with Kevin O'Donnell from Crown Trades technical team. If you are still watching us over on um, Facebook, that is now going to come to an end as we join the live session. So please click on the link, come over and join us. I know a few of you are still over there watching. Um, so what we're going to do now, if you look beneath me, you'll see there's a green button. If you click on there to join the Q&A and we'll take all your questions in our Q&A session and tell you how you can join our competition um, to win a Crown Trades goodie bag. I'll see you all soon. Hello and welcome to our live Q&A with Kevin O'Donnell from the Crown Trades technical team. Hi Kevin, welcome to the show. Hi Paula, thanks very much. Um, we saw some great products in the demonstration there. Um, I'm sure that you've all got questions of your own to put to Kevin. Um, feel free to comment in the comments bar as we go along. If you do have a question you'd like to ask Kevin, please hit the ask a question tab, type in your question. And if you want to come and ask Kevin yourself, you can give us a wave and I'll bring you up on the screen. Or if you prefer, I can just do that for you. So um, Kevin, I've got some questions for you. Um, okay. In extreme, is it um, really scrubbable in the real world? Uh, yes, I mean certainly you've seen it on the on the video, but as you've right to say that in the real world it is uh, to the point, and I think in the video it, it sort of shows with regard to the the cleaning of it. Certainly with uh, somebody using hot water, well hand hot water and um, soap. And actually washing off the surface and that's mainly with a sponge getting to the point but uh, it can be used with a scary pad so yes it does work fantastic and with um clean extreme mold inhibiting do you need to treat the mold growth first or can you just apply the paint over it uh now that's a good question uh because sometimes you think that mold inhibiting paint well actually you can just apply it over the top unfortunately you can't pull it it does need to be sterilized first so there are sort of proprietary products on the market and we do a, a fungicidal wash of which you actually need to treat the mold disfigurement first of all so the spores do need to be killed effectively so once that's done and you follow the manufacturer's instructions to do that and well certainly with ours you apply it you let it dry and then you can apply the paint directly over the top once it's dry. 
fantastic and how long will it last uh essentially in, indefinitely so uh once it's been applied and it's left exposed and the chances are it's designed to help it not to return so as i said if it's not overcoated by a standard coat of paint it will effectively last as long as it stays there brilliant and is clean extreme antibacterial safe to use uh yes yes it is i mean despite that it's got the added ingredient of the sterotouch product in into that and uh, but once it's dry it's inactive and certainly when it's used it's it's not harmful in any shape or form brilliant and um how long does antibacterial remain active if continually cleaned uh that's again it's very much like the uh, the mold inhibiting it remains active throughout its life and sometimes it's it's one of those things that it's been brought to market that uh and the reasoning behind that because a lot of the more modern products it doesn't it's all well it can potentially encourage uh i suppose mrsa e coli to actually remain on the surface and essentially grow but with this added ingredient it's designed not to it's designed to essentially kill it okay and i mean we looked at the flash fast flow quick dry system um, what's the best type of brush to apply, apply fast flow paints kevin uh, yeah, I mean, certainly decorators will know there's a variety of different brushes out there and probably more leaning towards the uh, synthetic type of brushes. And that's what we would recommend. And there are some good uh, and economical types of brushes, but choose the best brush that you can. But most certainly a synthetic brush for sure. And is it a system? Do you need to use fast flow primer undercoat or can you use, just use an acrylic primer undercoat with the product? Uh, that's a good question and sometimes it well to answer the question you do need to use it as a system and the chances are and it's the same with very much for walls historically it, for durability on walls you used to tend to use sort of oil-based paints certainly eggshells to achieve that but i think it's accepted now to just use water-based paints but when the transition from oils to water the the surface does need to be thoroughly cleaned down and that's just not abrading, but it does need to be washed as well. But nevertheless, if you use the system throughout, it provides that additional key. So yes, you do need to use the system. If you use a, a standard uh, acrylic primer undercoat and they're readily available, what it does do, it doesn't provide the additional flow. And the reason being, because that is just based on an acrylic, the fast flow system is based on in an emulsion blend. So that blend has a small amount of oil that helps to facilitate the application of the finishes over the top. That makes sense. I mean, Brian Dennett's just saying, so is the fast flow a hybrid? <laughs> yes, yes it is. It is classed as a hybrid and it's trying to get that hybrid essentially right with regard to, I suppose, the, from an application point of view, but yes, you're right. Okay. And um, can it be used over traditional oil-based paints? Yes, as I sort of preempted that one quite possibly. Yes, it can do. And the chances are, and the reasoning behind it is it's far easier to use, it's less smell. But the main thing with the transition with oil-based paints is that the, the preparation needs to be thorough. And as I mentioned before, not just by abrading, surfaces such as doors and door frames can be very tactile and what's often left behind is fingerprints and this is sometimes can let down historically water-based paints and we've had comments in the past of um, decorators and even customers just saying that the paints don't stick well they can do despite that they've rubbed down the surface they does need to be thoroughly degreased and that comes down to washing with hand hot water soapy water or there are proprietary sort of cleaners on the market or wipes that they can use to remove the finger marks and this aids the adhesion of the paint certainly water-based paints to sort of stick to the surface and i'll only mention this because it's relevant that if you use solvent born paints solvent born paints tend to be very more forgiving because the solvents within the paint because of the brush and application and the solvent that's used it actually breaks down the oils and mixes it within the paint to help cause that adhesion but whereas with the water-based paints you don't get quite that if that makes sense yeah so is it as tough then as a traditional gloss once it's cured, yes, it is. Yes, it is. But it's just making sure that you've got that 
key first of all once you've got using water-based paints most decorators will know that there's very little uh, adhesion that you'd need to do to wall areas and this is where i sort of liken it to uh, if you've got a, a vinyl mat or it's a, it's a, an acrylic eggshell or it's a vinyl silk, it's only a knee, D nib across the surface. But bearing in mind, it's not tactile. But on doors, if it's water based, it's already on there. Then all you need to do is just ensure that the surface is D nibbed and it's clean. And then the paint, you can actually just put the finishes over the top. Right. And will it yellow at all? Uh, that's a good question. Because of the small amount of oil that we do put in the paint to help facilitate the flow in the gloss, uh, it will do. But the art, we've done a lot of bench testing, as uh, the chemist mentioned on the video, uh, in comparison. And in comparison to others, ours has got a big tick on that. So in other words, it, it will yellow, but it's not going to yellow anywhere near as fast as the traditional oil-based paints. Right. And, and can it be used outside, Kevin? Yes, it can. There's a lot of sort of products that are designed for internal use that don't sort of weather effectively well externally. But uh, no, uh, this product can be used outside, of which I've got I've used it outside as well. So, yes. Right. And with it having that little bit of oil in it, what can you use to clean the brushes out? Believe it or not, you can just whilst it's still wet you can just use soapy water and it'll wash straight out you can wash it in the sink uh that's not a problem at all oh. however if it starts to dry and decorators will probably be aware of this if they've used uh sort of hybrid type paints is that it can start to dry in the stock so mostly you can wash it out with soap and water but you may find that the colors that you use predominantly white no doubt will actually eventually start to clog the stock so you may need to use a solvent cleaner to actually clean that out, a proprietary cleaner. Right. I've got a question moving on to the PX3 and PX4. Okay. I've got a question from Wayne Armstrong, and he says, Hi, Kevin. With the PX4 primer, what sort of preparations required before application? First of all. All oh, right. Hi, Wayne. <laughs> Thanks for the question. Now, that is a good question because it's a water-based product. But uh, as with any type of... Uh, primer that you're likely to use and in this instance it's either likely to be for adhesion or it's stain block properties that the surface does need to be as clean as possible so if it's holding back smoke stains the surface needs to be cleaned down prior to the application but other than that or certainly water stains it, the problem needs to be cured if that makes sense or if it's got a highly glazed surface it might be uh, a two-pack glaze that might be on the surface again for adhesion purposes the surface needs to be abraded and thoroughly cleaned other than that the, the product will actually stick to that that's fine if you liken it because in the video there was a mention of glass well to clean glass and and a tile you might clean one tile with a bit of abrasion such as a wet and dry paper or something like that but i would i would doubt that you would actually clean them all down and it's one of those things that we've done an extensive testing with that, providing that the surface is clean, scrupulously clean, the paint will stick to that without a problem at all. Okay, there's a number okay. of elements to Wayne's question. So oh, I'll right. take it step by step. He says, okay. what's the drying time for overcoating? Right, on the PX4, it's designed for overcoating within an hour, but bearing in mind that's in ideal conditions and that's at room temperature. Anything higher is gonna dry quicker, being higher, it's gonna be warmer. Or if it's colder, or if the surface temperature is colder, that's going to slow that process down. So just be mindful of that. Okay. It says, is it tintable? So it, in other words, you can overcoat it in an hour. Overcoat in an hour. But no, Sorry. No, and it's only it's available in white. Okay. And do you require an undercoat? No, it's not designed to be tinted at this point. Right. Sorry, what Sorry, was that? Paula? Is it, do you require an undercoat over it or is it self undercoating? Essentially, it's, it's as classed as a primer. It's uh, essentially self undercoating. So if the colour is there of your choice and it's essentially white, so if you're happy to go with white, then you can put any type of system you like over the top. But it's depending on what system that you're going with. Now, the chances are if you're going to go, uh, if it's likely to be on a wall area, then whatever that it's likely to be, such as vinyl mat or acrylic eggshell or our clean extreme, then that's provided a sound base of 
putting that paint on over the top. Okay. Okay. Um, I've got a question from Brian Denny. He said, will the PX4 pull back tannins and is it suitable to go over old stained or varnished timbers? Oh, okay. Often sometimes that is a challenge. Yes, it will hold uh, tannins back, but bearing in mind it may require two coats and you need that curing time in between the coats uh, because if you apply it too soon, what can happen is that once you've put the first coat on there and sometimes paints tend to dry relatively quickly within a matter of minutes or sometimes it can be think crikey that's that's dry quick so despite that we say an hour sometimes it can be that you've painted it prior to that but getting to the point that if you paint it too soon that the, the solvents within the paint despite that they're of a low solvent anyway they can cause it to migrate through so you must adhere to the drying times so if we call for two coats make sure that the first coat is dry first before you put the second coat over the top again with old varnish surfaces providing that the key because obviously varnishes they tend to get hard with age and can in brittle the surface does need to be abraded so as i said before if it can be abraded abrade the surface and also clean the surface and then that should stick to the surface without too much of a problem Okay, fantastic. Um, and can you use PX4, um, the water-based product, over water stains? Yes. Uh, it's one of those things that sometimes a water stain, if you use water-based products over a water stain, they often bleed through. So uh, this product, as uh, the chemist mentioned, that it can bleed through, but it'd be locked within the coating. And as I mentioned before, you can overcoat this within an hour. So, but you do need to leave it for that hour, despite that you can put your hand across the surface and think, crikey, that's dry quick, within half an hour. But the coating that you're putting over the top can soften the coating to cause that staining to leach through. And if the stain is severe, then I would suggest you put two coats on to oh, actually yes. ensure that that's held back, but essentially leave it on the drying time. Okay, and I've got a question from Tony Lamb. He says, hi, Kevin, would you recommend a paint conditioner for the fast flow or is it in the ingredients when manufactured? Hi, Tony, thanks for the question. That is a good question. Uh, a lot of the conditioners that you can put into probably more lend themselves to oil paints, but you can put them in sort of uh, uh, water-based paints as well. But we've made uh, the paint as what we would consider the best that it can be without adulterate adulterating it too much and despite that possibly you can do we wouldn't recommend it uh, because as i said if we thought that, that was needed in the first place we would put it in but uh, we think that we've got it uh correct however there could be certain conditions it's a fair weather product or certainly internal sometimes the, the surface can be quite warm or the surroundings can be quite warm in other words it can be a very warm room so if you can reduce the temperature or possibly even just wet the surface not so it's a running wet just so it's just damped down with a just a squeezed out chamois just to sort of lubricate the surface you don't want it running wet in any sort of shape or form but just to essentially cool the surface and then apply the paint over the top but um no we don't suggest conditioners Tony, I hope that sort of answers the question. But it's something that if you wish to try, then uh, that's, that's up to you. Some people find that it works for them. But uh, normally all our paints are designed essentially sort of ready to use. But people's interpretation of that ready can be slightly different because some paints can be quite gelled up. And sometimes it can be that it might need a, a small amount of fluid and predominantly that sort of water in our water-based products, obviously. But it's not a necessity, as I said, ours is design ready for use. OK, hopefully that's answered, answered the question, Terry. Thanks, Kevin. Um, can both primers be used outside, Kevin? Yes, they can, believe it or not. Yes, they can. And again, it's a fair weather product, certainly with a water base, but the PX3 being solvent, that's a bit more, uh, uh, that can possibly be you uh use more with regards to this sort of inclement weather with regards to its drying times it's far more forgiving that's the sort of uh, uh answer i'm looking for myself yeah more <laughs> <forgiving>. <laughs> okay 
Perfect. Well, if you've got any last minute questions, because we're coming to the end of the session, please feel free to type them in. Um, we are going to be launching our competition now. So when we finish the session, you'll see there's a button beneath myself and Kevin on the screen that says enter competition. All you need to do to enter is click on that button and it will take you over to our website. Just fill in your details there. It's all GDPR compliant um, and we will be choosing our winner at when once the Trade Decorator Festival is ended. The closing dates are on the website. So um, thank you everyone for joining us this afternoon. Thank you, Kevin. Um, I've learned a lot about Crown Paints <laughs> whilst you've been on the session. Um, and there's been some fantastic questions. So thank you to everybody that's contributed. And if you've not booked for this afternoon's session, uh, we do have another event at four o'clock. And there are um, events you can register for on our website, trade-decorator.co.uk right through till this Friday, the 11th of March. So I hope to see you all again soon. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Thanks, Paula. Thanks very much.